rig your system for relevancy. This is Super Fast Business with James Schramko. James Schramko. Helping you build your business super fast. 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 James Schramko here. Welcome back to superfastbusiness.com. Super awesome, excited today because we're going to be covering some strategic serialized email series information with my good buddy, Andre Chaperon. Welcome to the call. Hey, hey. Many years ago, I invited you to a podcast and you said no because you don't <laughs> do podcasts. You're very shy. What happened in between then and now? Yeah, I just put myself on the line and now I say yes every now and then. I still say, I still say no more than I say yes. Well, I feel um, extremely privileged and our listener is in for a treat uh, because you've put together a, a whole series uh, at my request. I've said, Andre, we need to bring this stuff you're doing to a broader market. We've got a great platform to do this with podcasting. We speak to each other every week and I'm so excited about what you do in your business and the great results you get. You've got worldwide fame as the <laughs> autoresponder madness guy and that is a big accolade. You're pretty much the industry standard, the benchmark of which everyone else has measured for emails and autoresponders. So let's just talk <laughs> about this series. Um, we sort of given a little overview of why we decided to do this. But what are we actually going to be talking about in this series? We're going to break this down into three modules. The first episode, which is this episode, we're going to be talking about the goal of your emails uh, in general. We'll talk about w why it's good to do emails, what exactly we're talking about, and some basic stuff. And then in episode two, we're going to break into the strategy we're really going to dig into the sub-levels of some of the really cool stuff that you've discovered in the many years that you've been doing this at an elite level. And then we'll come back for episode three and talk about some tactics because everyone wants to know the tactics. And, and after we've covered strategy, that will be an appropriate time to get some of those little subtle distinctions that are going to tweak and tune your overall strategic approach with some of those tactics. And if you combine all of that, what you have is the strategic serialized email series. So Andre, are you ready? Yeah, let's go for it, man. <laughs> this is good. All right. So we're going to be talking about the goal of your email within your business. And I, I know you've talked about the serialized aspect and perhaps we should develop what that actually means. Okay, so should I start with the goal then? Yeah, start with the goal. What, what, what are we actually trying to achieve? Why is this even important? Okay, so my idea of the goal of what email is about may be different to somebody else's. And I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I asked 100 different marketers, what's the goal of, your, of, of you doing email marketing, we'd probably get a huge different array of, of reasons. And um, I'm probably going to come across slightly as an arsehole for saying this one thing, but, <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. And that is, I think many marketers, there's, I think there are many marketers that they use email because they want to earn more money. And again, there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to earn more money, but it's rigged. They rig email marketing in their favor. Um, so their goal is is purely it's a transactional commodity based channel that they use to make more money. And having that mindset and mentality, they everything that they do is rigged in their favor and not in the favor of the recipient, the customer, the prospect or the person on the other side receiving those emails. So I guess that's that's the first thing I'll say. For me, the goal, although it's 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 obviously to earn money, it's about primarily it's about deepening a relationship with my audience that then allows me to have other cool things, benefits like um, increased customer value because now they want to stick around and they want to they want to um, hear what I have to say and they're not going to get frightened away like a like like Bambi I don't know so yeah it's about strengthening their relationship with an audience that you care about helping and they want to receive those emails from you so I guess that would be my number one goal and as a result of executing on that goal you earn more money right I was, was going to say that isn't it still going to earn you plenty of money if you have a relationship and people stick around 
certainly if they do and you ask them from time to time, they would actually purchase something. So are you really just talking about having a longer term approach to email than just a instant gratification method? Yeah, it's, it's funny sometimes because um, I do do the odd consult with with um, clients and I get approached and someone will say, you know, I've I've been hammering my, my email list to shit for, for the last few years and it's made me a ton of money, but nobody's, you know, my, my open rates have dropped to near enough zero and, and I've got a huge list. So it's like at that point, they're only thinking, you know, maybe it's a good idea to to think about this whole relationship thing with the list um, and hence why they why they want to jump on the phone with me. So I think that's the better approach is to start off by rigging everything in the favor of 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 your audience and then you get to have this this asset that's going to be around for a long time and you still get to make make a whole bunch of money. Well, wow, this is crazy talk. So you actually care about the customer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's insane, isn't it? <laughs> You hear people talk about it, uh, you know, like the, the ability to send email is really just like, you know, pushing a button to inject cash into your bank account. And then we hear about, you know, people seem to reflect on their lists down to more of a, you know, that's that's all presumed. So now it's just, are we going to hammer our list every day or should we just do it every week, you know? And if people want to leave our list, should we be upset about that or want not um the the volume that it, some people send is astronomical yeah sometimes you might get several emails per day from a marketer and then other times you never ever hear from them but when you do hear from them they they blow you away because their emails are so rare that uh, they're scarce but they probably are missing out on the relationship too so i'm sure we'll cover some of these more specifically in the, the strategy and tactics section so how do you establish yourself as someone worth paying attention to, you know, with your with your email series? Well, for me it all boils down to to one thing and that's relevancy, you know, being relevant. So every single thing that I do I'm thinking about that one thing and whatever I do needs to needs to fit in, into that box, it, you know, it it can't violate that that thing about being relevant. So as soon as you think about relevancy like that, it completely eliminates certain behaviors that lots of other people, you know, just take it for granted and, and that's how they operate. Um, so, yeah, relevancy is different for everybody because obviously we're all different and unique. So I guess the way that I look at it is somebody comes into your sphere of influence, for example, they'll they'll land on one of your websites They'll read something on that website and something will drive them to add themselves to, to your email list, right? So, you know, however that looks, it's that obviously looks different for everybody. But for whatever reason, they end up on your email list. Now, at that point, they, they're there for a reason. It's typically for whatever they've just read on your on your site, if it, whether it's some, some sort of bribe or, or money magnet or whatever, right? Now that person's going to go through a shift over time. You know, they've they're going to learn some stuff and they're going to read some stuff and like some stuff. And at some point, there's going to that that person's going to have a certain need that's going to be slightly different to the reason why they first jumped on on the first place. So I guess an example would be if somebody's if it's a traffic based thing and they've camped, and they've jumped onto someone's list because they're interested in acquiring more leads and traffic. So Obviously, there's different channels to traffic and there's SEO, as you know about, and there's PPC and there's paid traffic and there's various forms of organic and social traffic. So there's, there's all these different components and it's, you know, it can be assumed that no one person is going to be interested in all of those things at the same time, right? So by being relevant, you can't just send the same type of emails to the whole bunch of people and then just hope that it's a good match. Um, you can maybe an email one, two, and three because you know the reason why they're there. But as soon as it it goes out a few weeks, a few months, how do you know how that person has evolved and their level of sophistication? How it's how it's you know that that arc has has obviously changed. So um, there's obviously ways to figure this out, but being relevant is understanding that there's this change happening, and you need to be aware and rig your 
your your system in, in such a way that it allows people to to self select and therefore get the right message at the right time, sent to the right person. Obviously, making sense. <laughs> okay. So- Yes, so you've touched on a few things there. You briefly touched on the promise, so whatever's caused them to get on your email list. Uh, We might be able to develop that in a second. Putting that aside, you've talked about the source. It's where they came onto your list. Uh, It might be a different page. might be as a prospect. It might be as a buyer. And then you've implied that there's an arc that they'll go through, that change. Would it be fair to say that some of the way that your goal of – keeping that customer value and relationship there is that you're actually creating some of that arc through a deliberate email strategy? Uh, yes. So uh, it's you, you need to have a deep understanding about your audience and, and, and why they're there and what motivates them and ultimately what their, what their desired outcome is. So there's a few things that, that are presumed and, you know, you can't operate really, you can't operate on a very um, surface level, you need to have that deeper understanding. Otherwise, whatever you send out is just going to be—it's—it's it's not going to be deep enough for for it to create a connection with with somebody. So, just on that, if you if you're talking about segmenting and having the ability to detect where someone is at and being able to 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 change things and have your system set up for that, it sounds like you're needing a some level of complexity to your email system beyond just the standard everyone goes on a house list and you hit them over the head uh, every day with the same list? Back in the day, a few years ago, it was obviously more challenging to to rig the system like this. Um, I was using Aweber at the time, which is probably the most basic level of sophistication in the industry and they've remained that way almost since the beginning of time. So they're one company that just hasn't evolved. But even 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 if you do use Aweber, you can still rig this um, up. It's just it's slightly more challenging, but it's not rocket science. Um, but yeah, any any new ESP that you use, the whole range of them, from the good, the bad, and the ugly, they all have this pretty much baked into their into their DNA, whereas you can easily create this this automation required to to be able to do all of this stuff. Right, so I have to hit the buzzer here. <laughs> ESP stands for uh, email service provider. So yeah, your your Awebers and Infusionsoft and your Active Campaigns. Yeah, just don't want to make it easy for anyone to follow this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but so so far, just a quick recap. What you're telling us is that a good goal for your email is to increase the the lifetime value of your clients or customers by strengthening that relationship making sure that they want to pay attention to what you've got to say and that um, one of the keys to that is to recognize that some people change from when they join your list to where they end up, that you've got to consider where they're coming onto your list and you also have to observe as they go through that change, whether you're creating that change or whether they are naturally going through it, there will be some technology that helps you to keep segmenting customers into the appropriate part of your email system, your ESP, so that you can have the right conversation with people at the right time. Is that about right? That's about right. And all of that can be summed up into one word, which is um, relevancy or being relevant. So Beautiful. Let's just um, come back to the uh, – I promised to talk about promise. <laughs> what sort of things do you use as your promise to invite people into your email database? Yeah, like, again, I've, I approach this part of the, the whole system very differently to everybody else. So I don't want to freak people out by uh, creating more, more questions in their mind than, than answers. But essentially, somebody obviously comes to a website for – you know they've got some sort of – goal or in you know there's a problem that they need solving and so they end up on a website and they could have been there from just doing a search on the search engines or clicking on an ad somewhere or being referred to by somebody else um, that they perhaps know and trust so all of those create a different level of um, you know when they land on that site they're either cold or they're warm or they popping hot depending on how they got there, if, they, if it's been referred by, by somebody that they know and trust 
Well, if someone's listening to this podcast, they get to the end and then they go and click on the autoresponder madness link. That'll be in our yeah, show notes. Right. So they're going to know all about you. Yes. So their, their frame of reference is, is going to be different to somebody that perhaps cl- cl- uh, clicks on a Facebook ad and has never heard of me. Uh, but, the, you know, the ad just kind of popped out at, at them. So they click, they click that. So, so does it mean you're sending them to different places or do you have different types of offers in the same place again it, it goes down to relevancy so you know i guess in some cases you can have all your traffic going to one place or you can get all all ninja and slice and dice their traffic to go to different places so cold traffic would go to a place that perhaps introduces them to you in a different way than if somebody would was just landed up on your website for example so so my main website when you go to it it presumes a few things and it kind of it's it's a good balance for people that may have heard of me. So so the people listening to this now that perhaps may click the link and go across to my site, it'll all make sense when they get there. There doesn't, you know, it's it that's how it's rigged up. But when I'm driving cold, cold traffic, then there'll be some sort of bridge page that happens just before they they end up on that homepage that perhaps tells a slightly different story that just introduces them to me um, very quickly. So, but yeah, then there's obviously a promise on the website and people will opt in to, to hear that or get that or. Exactly. So just some, a simple application I might just share, um, just to, to make this simple is if you have a business type of website, you might have an about page and the about page might have content that helps people get to know you and you might have an opt in invitation that is different than you would have in category themed content that's a more technical or deeper or warmer in nature. Uh, so on my site, for example, we have different calls to action depending on the category of the content and we divided our content into the three main categories of our business units and that will end up in different calls to action so that people go to the right place and they get on the right list. And then you can start combining behavioral things too, can't you? So for example, a site like mine where we've had information products and also services, we'll actually start sending different emails if people visit a checkout page for different products and we'll, we'll actually follow them up specifically for the product that they visited. And when we're doing that, we can actually hold them out of all other communications uh, if we want to focus just on that transaction. So these are some of the things I think we're going to raise down in the strategy and the tactics section. Andre, what else is there to talk about regarding goals before we go on to our next module? I think that about nails it. You know, the the goal is to be relevant and you rig up your system so that it delivers this awesomeness to the people reading your stuff. And if you do that well, you're going to get rewarded by not just earning more money, but you're going to get that increased customer lifetime value. So, which is which is awesome because you know, now you get to make more money from that one person over time than somebody else that may burn that person to death. And within the first seven emails, that person's never going to open up anything else ever again. So you've just lost that opportunity to earn money from that from that person ever again. So yeah, um, be relevant. Yeah, perfect. So the quote for this episode is, rig your system for relevancy. Andre, we'll catch up with you on the next episode. We're going to be talking about strategy and we're going to go deep into that. Are you ready? Oh, my favorite part. I'll see you there. (laughs) Discover how to build your business super fast. Check out superfastbusiness.com.